Hello and welcome to the latest Royal Roundup from Talk TV. So pop the kettle on, this is The Royal Tea. I'm Sarah Hewson. They say a week is a long time in politics and a week can certainly be a long time in the life of the royal family. On today's show, we'll be reacting to the latest royal race row, which has seen a palace aide resign. The timing couldn't have been any worse, as the Prince of Wales prepares for the Earthshot Prize in Boston. And we've seen the first glimpse of Harry and Meghan's Netflix documentary, with the trailer being released a week before the show is due to air. Joining me today are Royal Commentator and Talk TV host Daisy McAndrew and Royal Commentator and Talk TV regular Afia Hagen. We're also going to be getting the thoughts of former Royal correspondent Michael Cole. Prince William has said that racism has no place in our society after his godmother resigned as a palace aide for questioning a black domestic abuse campaigner about where she really came from. Ngozi Filani, who's 61 and British, was attending a reception hosted by the Queen Consort at the palace to mark the UN's 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. The aide is understood to be Lady Susan Hussey, who'd been a lady-in-waiting to Queen Elizabeth II and was made Lady of the Household by King Charles. Before we get the reaction of Daisy and Afia, let's speak first to royal, former royal correspondent Michael Cole. Thank you for joining us. Michael, I want to get your reaction to this story uh, when you first heard it and were you surprised by it? Well, it is appalling, of course, Sarah, and th those remarks were inexcusable, but it's all terribly sad. Uh, when I heard it, first of all, I really couldn't believe it because I've been around the world with Lady Susan Hussey as she has attended Her Majesty the Queen, the late Queen. Um, in all different sorts of occasions, uh, with different sorts of people from all backgrounds and ethnicities. And uh, she was always very charming and very pleasant. We have to remember, because it is very sad, uh, because she's 83, uh, she's a widow. Lady Susan herself uh, was always very conscientious and always keen to put people at ease. And I think what she's done here, she's resigned Im immediately and, and she's apologised. Um, and obviously, um, she didn't set out that day, I'm quite sure, because she's far from being a malicious person. And I've never heard her say a bad word about anybody. Uh, she didn't set out that day to offend this lady. But obviously, she has done so. What of the palace's response to this then, Michael? A statement issued within hours and also from Kensington Palace saying that there was no place for racism in society and that it was right that Lady Susan Hussey had stepped down. Well, it was an immediate reaction from Buckingham Palace and, you say, Kensington Palace. I mean, uh, her godson, uh, Prince William, the Prince of Wales, has certainly cut her loose because you and I know that the most toxic charge you can make in this modern world is one of racism. The truth of the matter is, though, it's an easy allegation to make and it's an almost impossible one to refute because you're out trying to prove a negative. I can only say uh, what I saw over the years uh, around the world uh, in some quite difficult situations sometimes that she never really put a foot wrong and she was always friendly to everybody, even, even the monsters from the press like me. She was always polite and, and, and kind when she could be. And I'm quite sure Her, Her Majesty the Queen, the late Queen, would be mortified to see this happening to such a faithful and loyal person who, as I say, for half a century uh, was at her elbow in difficult situations and many, 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 many receptions around the world. The problem I think you've got now, and it is a problem, is um, what, do you, what do you say on situations like this? Lady Susan obviously didn't learn a wonderful lesson from Her Majesty the Queen, because were the Queen meeting you or me, she might say, um, have you come far? Well, <laughs> it's a good question because uh, nobody can take offence at that, and it starts off a conversation. 
I hear what you're saying, Michael, and I've read multiple responses on social media. This was just polite curiosity. She was just trying to find out more uh, about this woman. But it wasn't just that, was it? It wasn't one question. It was the persistence of it. It was those repeated questions and the inference that that led to that you can't possibly be British because you don't look British. You're not white, effectively, is the impression that that persistent questioning gave. That is inescapable. That's an inescapable conclusion. And of course, you're, you're quite right. But let's be clear, we're not seeing a transcription of a recorded interview. We're seeing a written recollection of a conversation. If it had been recorded, perhaps there would be nuances or we would be able to judge better whether Lady Susan Hussey went out of her way to offend her. Obviously, she has offended her, but did she do it out of malice, out of spite? It's not in character with her, I must say. Now, at this reception, which was crowded, and we've all been to places like that, people were wearing name tags. And that's how the, the woman herself knew it was Lady Susan Hussey, because her name was displayed. Perhaps it was her interesting name uh, that uh, intrigued her. And perhaps she was trying to find out originally the antecedents of her. Quite clearly, she was not Anglo-Saxon uh, in her origin. So I can see a fear listening to this and shaking head, and I will get um, more response to this. But, but I just want to move on to the damage this does to the reputation of the royal family now, because this wasn't just any old member of staff, was it? This was somebody who was right at the centre for many, many years. And given many what years. unfolded last year, given what Meghan said in the Oprah Winfrey interview and the damage that has done, does this vindicate Harry and Meghan for what they said? And does this do further damage to the reputation of the royal family? Because it certainly looks out of touch, if not institutionally racist. You're quite right. Lady Susan Hussey could not have been closer to the monarch. Uh, and she was there for more than half a century. And it, it was quite an honor to be asked to be godmother uh, to the future king. Um, Prince William when he was born and also was present at his confirmation. She was right there centrally to it. Uh, is the institution of monarchy old fashioned? Probably it is. Uh, is. Is it high bound by tradition? Yes, it, it probably is. But that's the way it was uh, during the record breaking reign of Her Majesty the Queen. Um, Prince Charles now says he wants to modernize it, wants to bring it up to date. And with regard to the charge of, of, of racism, uh, Prince William, when the shouted question came to him, said very, this is definitely not a racist family. He was obviously hurt by that. And if you actually, with a, a journalist's eye, with a, with, a, with a forensic eye, and you look at the interview with Oprah Winfrey, with the two of them, I think Prince Harry looked very, very uncomfortable as his wife drew him into that conversation. Let's get reaction now from Afia and Daisy in the studio with me. And Afia, um, I was watching you during that interview and you had your head in your hands at certain points. What was it that was being said? I mean, there's so many issues with this, with this whole story. I mean, first of all, yes, Lady Susan Hussey may have, you know, how many countless years of service, but it doesn't matter how old she is, her status, who her husband was. At the end of the day, what she did to Ngozi Fulani at this event at the palace was racist. And the racism that was so that was displayed was so institutionalized. We now have to explain to people why it's wrong. And you have people who Okay, so let's want explain, explain it. You, so you've it experienced away. this uh, on uh, many occasions. A thousand times. So there's nothing wrong with asking someone where they're from. There's nothing wrong with being curious about someone's heritage. It's how you ask those questions. And the way that Lady Susan Hussey interrogated, and that's what it comes across as, interrogated Ngozi Fulani as to her heritage comes from a place of not believing that a black person can be British. She said, where are you from? 
And Gozi says, sister space, no, where are you from? Hackney, you know, and she wants, what she wants to know, and, and Lady Susan Hussey said this, you know, what part of Africa are you from? And Gozi Fulani is British. She was born in Britain. Her saying, I'm British, should be enough. But the inference is, you cannot possibly be British because you are black. So where are you from? Now, if Lady Susan Hussey was genuinely interested in her heritage, in her name, you know, Michael talked there about her name. Um, maybe her name was the reason why she was drawn in. Let's not forget that Lady Susan, Susan Hussey reached out and moved Ngozi Fulani's hair to look at her name badge. If you, could you explain, because I was talking about this yesterday, yeah. and I know that that's a big no-no. Yeah. But some people I was with last night um, on this channel had no idea why that's such a no-no. Can you explain that? OK, so black women have, for so long, we've had to explain so much about our hair, why our hair changes so much. It's straight. It's, then it's not straight. You know how much I change my hair. It's coloured, then it's not coloured. It's, it's to do with beauty standards and the, the, the beauty standards that black women are being held to, which are higher than usual beauty standards. And we have so many But um, people also feel that they're allowed to touch your hair. Exactly. It's weird. Exactly, because our hair is seen as quote unquote different. So I've been Like on when the someone bus. touches your belly when you're pregnant. Exactly yeah, you think, that. that. Invasion. Is, it's an invasion of a person's personal space. And this is something that specifically happens to black women and white women, white men, other people just don't... Can't understand. Don't yeah. get it. Mm. Yeah. So the first thing when I read this story and I saw, you know, and she touched my hair, I was like, Oh, you know, how could she have done that? Yeah. But but people don't know that it's and it's they, a real taboo thing to do. They don't understand the connotations yeah. behind but, it. But, but but Lady Susan Hussey is someone who has travelled all over the world, throughout the Commonwealth, is has met so many different people. She's been described by her friends and supporters as, as you know, an arch diplomat, someone who is extremely at ease in these circumstances. So but, this is not someone who who shouldn't know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. She's had so much experience in this field, travel around the world, like you said, met people from many walks of life. She's actually represented know. on multiple occasions the head of state. That is how senior she is. She has been sent to represent the Queen at events, formal events that the Queen couldn't make it to. That is right at the heart of the monarchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you should know that this is not how you treat people. Or you should know about cultural nuances, even if you don't understand them. This whole episode is so incredibly damaging and has come at such an appalling time well, with, with William and Kate in America trying to do, you know, their, their, their glad-handing piece, trying to get popularity up for the royal family. Every British newspaper front page racism in the royal family, but also I'm sure yours has. My phone's been ringing off, you know, I mean, non-stop mm. from American networks wanting to talk about this mm. issue. This story has landed and mm. is is punching and is causing damage. Mm. Is that why we saw this very swift response from? Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace yesterday, Daisy. Does it tell us that they've learnt the lessons of the past and, and they want to show that they are a more modern monarchy now? Or was it more about trying to change the narrative back onto what they want, which is the Earthshot Prize and the Wales's trip to the United States? All of the above. And the, the one positive silver lining is that they did act quickly. There was no uh, attempt to explain, excuse. Th there wasn't. And I think if the Queen had still been around, that would have been different. She was famous for being a, you know, a bit of an ostrich sometimes when things weren't going badly. You know, Sympathetic people might have said, "Well, she had that sort of keep calm and carry on and don't panic and see how see how things unfold." Actually, in this situation, I think that would have been the wrong mm -hmm. situation, the wrong answer to that, and a swift response was necessary. And I do have compassion and empathy for Susan Hussey. I feel sorry for her in on one side because it must be devastating for her. That doesn't mean I don't think what she said was wrong and racist. It was. I think you can have some personal compassion and in fact and Gozi herself said she didn't want this woman to be vilified and that she actually didn't want her name to come out now I have th that slightly awkward because she used the initials and and it was blazingly obvious to anybody who knew the royal household mm, that SH was. was going to be Susan Hussey <laughs> so and what about Harry and Meghan and those claims made last year does this 
justify those claims Absolutely. with vindication to them? Yeah. I mean, let's remember that Lady Susan Hussey was the person who was assigned to sort of help integrate Meghan into the royal family. I, we do not know any of the conversations between them, but I shudder to think. And so I think it more than legitimises the claims that Harry and Meghan made, um, especially around the claims around baby Archie, what his skin colour would look like. And we, the trailer has dropped for their Netflix series, mm. which is out next week. You know, it's very juicy already. We've seen they're going to talk about their relationship, the relationship with the press, Harry through the years. Looks like it's going to be emotional, but they have receipts. Believe me, they have receipts. And I can. I think we're going to hear... What do you mean by about, that is, is proof yes, of stuff. Absolutely. And I think we're going to hear about more racism within the royal family. I really do. And the other thing, of course, is people are now remembering that in the Tom Bauer book, uh, Tom Bauer quotes Lady Susan Hussey as saying about Harry and Meghan's relationship, it'll end in tears. Mm -hmm. Now... At the time, that wasn't taken as a racist comment. And, of course, now it's one of the tragedies in some ways of this story, but some people might say it's a good thing, bring things into the light. People are now thinking, was that a racist comment or was that a comment just about their relationship and about the love story and, and whatever? And greater context on this coming this week from Neil Bazu, the former head of counterterrorism at the Met, who said that there had been multiple real, credible threats against Meghan's life from the far right. I mean, justify so many things that they said in the Oprah interview. Um, you know, when they talked about having to, they wanted to have their protection in place, that they um, wanted money to do that, but weren't being supported in that way. When we talk, we'll look at their mental health, I mean, if your life was under threat, I think you, that would affect your mental health There was as well. also the interview that Harry did in South Africa yep. in 2019, when he says, if you knew what, what I, I knew, know. Exactly, exactly. You'd be and doing then... exactly the same. Um, Let's talk a little bit more about the trailer for Harry and Meghan's Netflix show because it has been released and it will already be putting some tails up at Buckingham Palace. Uh, we've just watched it. It's a big intake of breath yeah. there, Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sort of jaw-dropping, grab the popcorn, oh, my God, hide behind the sofa you yeah. know, moment. Yeah. And you think, you know, a lot of us thought this was all going to be a bit bland. Perhaps it's it had not. been toned down. Perhaps, you know, it was all going to be a bit boring. And Megan Tra said, you know, this is about our love story, yeah. so maybe it would all be but very it sweet. It looks... It, it does look definitely like it's about their love story. Some really lovely pictures that we've never seen before of the two of them. But, you know, we have had the, the shot of sort of Megan sort of hunched over in the chair looking at the phone. Who's she talking to? And then, you know, we have the shot of the two of them at the end looking very emotional. What just happened? And then we had Harry saying, you know, talking about wanting to protect his family, which he's talked about before. And then Megan saying, you know, would you not want to get the truth of what happened from, from us? And I clearly can't wait. focus on the press as well because we yep. see the shots yeah. of all the camera lenses pointing at them, the newspapers. The newspapers rolling. Mm. Yeah. And then Harry that through the years and Megan through the years as they chatted, I thought it was nice as well. I mean, we've all been to the cinema having seen an amazing trailer and been bitterly disappointed and realised that all the good bits from the whole film have been <laughs> shoved into the trailer and the, the movie itself is quite sort of empty. But em it's six empty parts, isn't it? But it's, it's, it, it's six parts and we've been saying for months now, Netflix have paid a lot of money for this. They're going to want their money's worth. Mm -hmm. And you know, if people turn off after the first episode because it's boring, that will not be getting bang for their buck. So it will certainly get big figures, but yeah, I mean, the time couldn't be worse and I do feel sad I feel sad about all of it at the moment I feel sad about the racism accusations I feel sad that there doesn't seem to be any rapprochement on the horizon for the boys I feel sad for the Queen you know sort of pot potentially turning in her grave and thinking and I also feel sad for Prince for King Charles this was meant to be his moment where he and he definitely is somebody who cares about diversity and inclusion. I really do believe that. Mm. Um, and it's all going really badly. To, to be honest, so I feel sad that we have racism within the royal household. I feel sad for Ngozi Fulani that 
she was at an event that was to do with violence against women and girls, a really important event. And she does some incredible work with Sister Space, which is um, a charity that works with black women who are victims of domestic violence in East London. I feel sad that we're not talking about that enough. Mm -hmm. And I feel sad that there is racism in the royal family. But I will say this, and I've said this before in the past, when Harry and Meghan wanted to be, because initially actually they wanted to be part-time working roles. They wanted to do some of their own stuff and some royal stuff. Let me tell you this right now. If they had been allowed to do that, we wouldn't have a documentary. None of this would have happened. We wouldn't have the Oprah interview. Who's, who's we wouldn't fault, have the documentary. Was, that? was that the Queen's? That's, I think that's, or... I think actually that's the fault of the royal household not being able to sort of bend a little bit. We know it's never been done before. Okay, that's fine. It breaks with tradition. But what were the reasons behind that couldn't couldn't have happened? Why did it have to be all in or all out? I think perhaps on both sides there could have been better negotiation. But honestly, if they perhaps had been allowed to do part-time working roles and part-time working on their own charities, Invictus Games and what else, we probably wouldn't have the Oprah, Oprah interview. We probably wouldn't ha have had a six-part mm. documentary or the book coming out. That's all I'm going to say. And the documentary is out next week. We will have full reaction to it on the next episode of The Royal Tea, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> Lots to talk about. Uh, that is all we've got time for this week. My thanks to Michael, Daisy and Afia. We will be back next week with lots, lots more. Don't miss it. We'll see you then.